Okay, just a quick sidestep from some of the ecology and communities and relationship between all living organisms building that we've been talking about so far. You see this title here, it says heterotrophic plants and algae, and it should be jumping out at you a little bit because this word heterotrophic isn't normally associated with plants and algae. Normally when you're talking about plants, you're talking about things that have chlorophyll and can do photosynthesis and therefore be able to make their own food using light energy from the actual sun. But in this case, there are always exceptions. So for everything that you see out there in the environment, we like to classify things into different categories. Scientists like to do this, they're called taxonomists, but there's always, not always, but highly likely that we just haven't seen everything that's out there. And so there are always some exceptions that show up. I said always again, and usually that is the case, even with things that are pretty strong, like the cell theory. We've, we've seen some strange things in topic one back at the beginning as well, too. So most plants and algae are autotrophic or autotrophs. They're able to make their own food using photosynthesis. There are some exceptions, and they're considered exceptions because they don't do the normal autotrophic thing. They actually get their nutrition and energy the same way, kind of, that we do. You know, we eat things, goes through our digestive system and gets absorbed into our bloodstream. They don't necessarily have big jaws, but they can still suck up nutrients and take them from other places without having to manufacture them themselves. So these guys are considered heterotrophs. So they're heterotrophic plants and algae. So they're obtaining these carbon compounds from other sources and not making them uh, themselves directly. So some examples are here. Um, you can find some other examples in the textbook and online as well too. So daughter plants, I don't think you have to remember what they look like, but daughter plants basically feed on the stems of other plants. Then you have these cool looking things over here. These are ghost orchids that live underground and they can obtain their nutrition from kind of a mutualistic relationship with fungi. And the most obvious of the heterotrophic plants are the ones that fascinated me as a kid. Uh, things like Venus flytraps and pitcher plants as well too that can actually obtain their nutrition from the dead bodies of insects and in some cases in some of these really large heterotrophic pitcher type plants can actually get their nutrition from small mammals and things like that pretty awesome stuff so plants Yes, most of them are autotrophic if they do photosynthesis as their primary means of getting uh, energy to make food, but there are some heterotrophic plants. So a little sidestep from everything else that we've been looking at.